Welcome to MDVOD, Your Health Live and On Demand. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and today we're talking about skin cancer, the most common of all human cancers. Each year, there are more new cases of skin cancer than the incidence of breast, prostate, lung, and colon cancers combined. We also know in one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in the course of their lifetime. As we do with every illness, we'll explain in simple terms what skin cancer is, who's at risk, what the dangers are, and common symptoms. I'll also be joined by America's favorite plastic surgeon, Dr. Drew Orden, to discuss how we diagnose this condition and what he feels the effective treatments are. We'll also take a look at whether insurance covers the costs. So join us as we simplify what you need to know about skin cancer here on MDVOD, your health live and on demand. We're back on MDVOD, your health live and on demand, talking about skin cancer. As we mentioned, this is the most common form of cancer in the United States. Over the past 30 years, more people have had skin cancer than all other cancers combined. So many people know that skin cancer is something they should be concerned about, especially as it's becoming increasingly more common. But while most have probably heard about the dangers of melanoma, they may not be as aware of the other skin cancer types, which can also be harmful and require prevention, screening, and treatment. The three most common forms of skin cancer are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common type of skin cancer, affecting about a million new people each year in the United States. This type of skin cancer is caused by too much exposure to the sun and is characterized by a chronic sore that doesn't heal, or a rapidly growing lesion with sores. It occurs most often in fair-skinned people whose skin is not likely to tan. While easy to treat and rarely fatal, Basal cell carcinomas can cause significant scarring. The second most frequently diagnosed type of skin cancer is squamous cell carcinoma, with 250,000 Americans being diagnosed each year. Squamous cell carcinoma affects the very top layer of the skin and occurs most often on the head, shoulders, arms, as well as the edge of the ear and lower lip. Like basal cell carcinomas, it too is caused by too much exposure to the sun and is characterized by sores that won't heal or quickly growing lesions on the skin. This carcinoma may look like thick bumps in the skin, often with elevated edges. It's easy to treat and not usually serious, but should be caught early and treated to prevent the spread to other organs. The least common of the three main skin cancer types is melanoma but it can be the most deadly. When melanoma goes untreated and spreads beyond the skin and into other body parts, the condition can become very serious. Melanoma is again caused by too much exposure to the sun, but it's more common in those that have had severe blistering and sunburns, a lot of moles, fair skin, and a family history of melanoma. This type of cancer may look like an irregular mole or a mole that bleeds, which may feel sore, hard, swollen, itchy, and can appear anywhere on the body. When caught early, melanoma can be cured, but if not addressed until advanced stages, melanoma can be fatal. They all may look a little different, but you can help reduce your risk of all skin cancer types the same way by being smart about the sun. Reduce exposure to the sun's harmful rays by using a high SPF sunscreen, wearing hats and long sleeves, and limiting how much time you spend out in the direct sun. Follow these skin cancer prevention tips and your skin will thank you. And make sure to get to know your skin very well. Do a full body check and it might help to get a partner or friend to look at the hard to reach areas. Try to do this every month and make sure your doctor does a skin check at least once a year. This will increase your chances that any skin changes can be identified and dealt with very early. Because as with any cancer, 
skin cancer has the best outcome with early diagnosis and treatment. Sometimes precancerous skin conditions are seemingly harmless changes in the skin that can signal dangers ahead. So pay attention. If you're diagnosed with a precancerous lesion, it can usually be easily treated with a topical cream or a minor procedure to remove the growth and keep it from developing into skin cancer. To protect your skin and spot the early skin cancer signs, be on the lookout for new growths or sores that don't heal and see a doctor as soon as possible if you detect something suspicious. If you see something that's new growth, you should make an appointment. It's not an emergency, but don't procrastinate. And here's something easy and helpful to remember about moles on your skin that might be cancerous. Remember your alphabet, because thinking of A, B, C, D may actually save your life. Welcome back to MDVOD. Learning the anatomy always gives us a better understanding of any disease. Our skin is the largest organ of our body and it covers the body's entire surface. The skin is responsible for protecting us from bacteria and viruses. It insulates us to keep us warm. It can form scar tissue when we're injured and it also produces vitamin D, which helps us absorb calcium. The skin has several layers. The outer layer, known as the epidermis, the inner layer, known as the dermis, and a deep layer known as the subcutaneous tissue. Skin cancer begins in the epidermis, which is made of three different types of cells. The squamous cells, which are thin, flat cells and form the top layer. The basal cells, which are round cells just beneath the squamous cells. And the melanocytes, which are found in the lower part of the epidermis and make melanin, the pigment that gives skin its natural color. When skin is exposed to the sun, melanocytes make more pigment, causing the skin to darken. Stay tuned and find out if this skin problem can be from too much sun when we're back with America's favorite plastic surgeon, Dr. Drew Orden. Welcome back everyone, and we're here on MDVOD with America's favorite plastic surgeon, just recently Emmy Award nominated and author of his new book, Andrew Orden, thanks for coming. Well, at least hopefully your favorite plastic surgeon. I mean, <laughs> since I'm here, I guess he likes me, right? Well, thank you for that intro. And, and John, you are on our show, The Doctors, and it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I've checked your show out. Good stuff. Hey, Continued thank you. success. It's, it is good stuff. And hey, I have a question for you before we get to the hardcore okay. facts. All right. Drew. Um, you know, America's favorite plastic surgeon, you know, you're also the tannist. I go. I, so, so, I knew. I so. knew this was coming, right? Well, I recently we we recently wrapped season four, and I was just down in Mexico in Cabo, and I did get quite a bit of. You sun. look great. Well, well, thank you. And you know, you bring up a topic. I'm blessed. I don't burn. I genetically, I'm I'm 100% Slavic. I don't burn. I have a certain skin type what they call a Fitzpatrick four, meaning that I'm, I'm naturally olive. And that comes into our whole discussion about skin cancer or skin types. People that have really pale skin, like that white Anglo-Saxon type skin, anyone who's susceptible to burn is more susceptible to skin cancers. Wow, okay. And let's say, let's say um, you're worried uh, that you might have uh, skin cancer, you have a, a suspicious mole. Um, wh what do people typically come to your office for? What, what do they tell you and ask well, you? Well, they, they may come see me. A lot of times they, they start with their dermatologist. It could be their primary care physician as well. But you did such a wonderful job showing the viewers the basic anatomy of the skin and, and some of the signs that you need to look for with changing lesions. So mm -hmm. you look for color and, and, and asymmetries, diameter, uh, anything that's changing. So if you have a high level of suspicion, something that's changing, mm -hmm. you want to make a diagnosis. Remember they taught us that in medical I, school, I, make that diagnosis. And with, with any skin lesion, that is the number one uh, 
goal to achieve. Okay, so let's say um, you're worried, you, you look at this mole, and uh, what's the next step? How do you actually make the diagnosis? Well, the, the next step is going to see the, the person that will be treating your skin. They're gonna wanna make a diagnosis. The, really, the best way, uh, foolproof way to make the diagnosis is to do an excisional biopsy, mm -hmm. cut it out, give it to the pathologist who's going to look at it under the microscope and tell you, is it benign? Mm -hmm. Is it cancer? Is it malignant? Mm -hmm. And you went through it, three types of skin cancer mm -hmm. that we worry about, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and of course, the more, most lethal form, melanoma. Wow, so that's great advice. Um, remember, if there's a new skin mole or something that's changing rapidly, changing color, um, remember the alphabet, the ABCDs that we talked about earlier, This the same that Dr. Orden is talking about. And remember to get it checked, don't wait. Um, go in, see Dr. Orden or someone, a dermatologist to get it looked at. And um, once it's diagnosed, um, once it's diagnosed, that's what sort of guides our therapy. Is that right, Drew? It, it, exactly. But ultimately, if you have any degree of suspicion, you have to go see your, your skin expert. Mm -hmm. We've made the diagnosis, then it's time to treat it. Okay. And, and once we have the biopsy, uh, you send it to the pathologist, and they come back and they tell you uh, what it is. It's one of the three types. It's basal cell, it's squamous cell, and um, God forbid it's melanoma, although still... Um, treatable if caught early. Um, well, how do we treat it? So important to make that point, Dr. Kennedy, that like everything in medicine, early diagnosis, early treatment, you can cure it. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. another great point you make is that you don't treat the three different types of skin cancer in the same way. The amount of tissue that you remove around the cancer, the so-called margin, mm -hmm. varies between basal cell, it's less aggressive, it doesn't tend to spread than squamous cell, and we know melanoma, more aggressive, it tends to grow deeper and can get into the bloodstream and, 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 and move to other parts of the body. So the type of cancer determines how much extra tissue, mm. so-called margin, you have to remove with that to ensure that you've gotten all of it. It's so-called it. clean margins. So Drew, uh, you brought us an example of one of your patients here. Can I, you take us through what's going on here? I did. This is a picture of a gentleman from my Rancher Mirage practice, and there's a lot of sun worshipers and a lot of sun damage uh, in the desert. And because of that, a lot of cases of skin cancer. So this gentleman had, had a relatively small lesion. The dermatologist that I work with biopsied, it turned out to be a basal cell, but using Mohs chemo surgery, which is a great way to precisely remove skin cancers, <clears throat> she removed all of it, but it left this kind of defect. So very wow. often with skin cancers, the actual cells have spread much more than that, than that lesion that you're looking at. And you know, I'd much rather have you come to my office for Botox or something mm -hmm. than, than having to repair this kind of defect. But something I love to do, I'd say at this point in my practice, I like doing facelifts and noses, and on top of that, I like doing reconstructions on the face. So let me show you the after picture. So just one, one point of clarification. This is, a, this is an example of after Mohs treatment. And Mohs treatment is a way to remove the basal cell cancer with accurate margins. Is that right? Exactly. And, and the point being that very often you end up having to remove much more tissue than you thought. Mm -hmm. And if you used another technique, chances are this, this skin cancer would have come back. So Wow. Okay, that so is like the advantage. freezing or burning or something we talked you would, about You'd earlier. miss it, and you'd have to come back, and you may have to end up even re removing more tissue from this gentleman's cheek. So I'm a firm believer in that. The dermatologist removes it, makes a diagnosis, uses Mohs chemo surgery to definitively remove that skin cancer, and then sends the patient to the plastic surgeon for reconstruction. So the pathologist has told you, hey, Drew, there's clean margins here. The cancer's gone. Well, when gone. they do Mohs chemo surgery, the, 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 it's going right then and there. They wow. send the sections to the pathologist who tells the dermatologist, you're clean, you're good, you're done. Or you have to go back and get some more. Wow. So you've got rid of the cancer, but
but you still have this defect, and that's where you come in. That's where the plastic surgeon Got comes it. in, and uh, we have the after picture. Pretty, pretty nice result doing just what we call a primary closure. We develop cheek flaps uh, on either side of this defect. Wow, it's just amazing. Just advance them in, and he healed very, very well. You can barely see that, but that's incredible. Work. You're far, you're far better avoiding that skin cancer in the first place. Wow, incredible advice. Hey, good stuff. Thanks so much, Dr. Drew Orton. John, I could go all day with doctors. you. This was, this was good stuff, stuff. and I, I think we gave some great information to your viewers out there. No doubt. Hey, up next, join us on our Apple a Day when we learn more tips about preventing skin cancer. We're back with an Apple a Day and common sense tips to help minimize the risk of skin cancer. With or without skin cancer, keeping your skin clean and moisturized is key. Wash your face each morning and each night and use a mild soap or facial cleanser. Avoid harsh soaps that can dry the skin and be gentle using circular movements. Always use a moisturizer with sunscreen of at least SPF 15 after you wash. And look for a moisturizer that contains an ingredient called microfine zinc oxide. It will provide sunscreen and anti-aging protection from UVA and UVB radiation. And remember to exfoliate. Gently scrub your face a few times a week with an exfoliant and be sure not to exfoliate every day. And don't forget your body. Use a gentle body wash that also moisturizes your skin over your entire body. Experts agree on the use of one product that patients who have received skin cancer treatment should never skip. That's sunscreen. Wear it daily. Start every day by applying a broad spectrum UVA, UVB sunscreen of SPF 15 to your face and body. Higher SPF is recommended if you are going to be out in the direct sunlight for extended periods of time, rather than just running around doing errands and getting only brief sunlight exposure. If you still feel you need a suntan glow, Opt for self-tanners or bronzers instead of tanning beds. In the long run, you'll be glad you did. Other products to consider are antioxidants, such as vitamin C, vitamin E, coenzyme Q10, as well as some cholesterol-lowering drugs, topical retinoids, such as Retin-A, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Talk to your doctor to see if any of these might be helpful to add to your skincare regimen. Remember to be careful with over-the-counter herbal skincare products because the words natural or herbal on the label doesn't always mean it's safe for your skin. And be sure to stay on top of the latest news about skin cancer at cdc.gov because the more you know, the more successful you'll be in living with skin cancer or any condition. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found this information about skin cancer helpful. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and you're watching MDVOD, your health live and on demand, here on EmpowerMe.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and share us with your family and friends. And for episodes you might have missed, they're now available on demand at EmpowerMe.tv's website and the YouTube channel. And be sure to leave your comments and questions so we can better help you with any disease. See you next time on MD VOD.